Being a PC gamer on a really tight budget can sometimes really suck, let's just be honest. Being a budget PC gamer on a laptop, pretty much impossible unless if you're only playing easy to run games like CSGO or Valorant. All of that changes today though because this brand new less than $500 laptop is rocking a dedicated GPU. Yes, you heard that correctly and it can crank out some seriously playable FPS numbers in every game you throw at it. There's also a feature on here that I cannot believe is included at this price point that you don't wanna miss. Honestly, it all sounds a little bit too good to be true, but let's check this thing out. Before that though, shout out to Newtopia for being today's video sponsor. And honestly, I don't think I've ever seen a health product like this before. You can officially consider your boy impressed. Basically, you start off by completing this mental survey. That way they can craft a supplement stack specifically for the way your brain works. And then they send you a kit with everything you need to start unlocking peak mental performance, which is something I'm personally always interested in learning about. The cool thing is that they support you in that and they don't just leave you in the dark, they have so many resources such as their 41 page brilliant mind and blueprint book, which talks you through how you'll be taking all of these supplements, how they affect your body and brain, and it even outlines an exact day by day summary of everything you should be doing to unlock your brain's potential. Some of the products included are the Nectar X, which basically just jump starts your brain, power solution for all day energy without the jitters, and there's even a mental reboot product, which is great for clearing brain fog after a rough night out or bad night of sleep, perfect for when I play basketball all four hours after our Thirsty Thursday live streams. Newtopia has tons of options for different types of people and different types of budgets. Head on down to the first link down in the description to learn more and start unlocking your brain's full potential. All right, so this here is the Asus ZenBook 14 inch laptop. And at the time of producing this video, it's actually well under $500 on a sale down to just $470 on Best Buy and Amazon. Link down in the description, of course. And honestly, I don't think I've ever touched a laptop with this much price to performance in my entire life. Before getting to that dedicated graphics card, first up for the CPU, it's rocking a Ryzen 5 5500U, which is a pretty popular and very capable six core and 12 threaded chip that can boost up to 4.0 gigahertz. The kicker is that this 5500U does have its own Vega 7 graphics. We all know at this point that it can play the easier titles in like 720p, sometimes 1080p. And for like every other budget laptop that has this CPU, they usually do not include a dedicated graphics card as well. To go along with that, we are unfortunately only looking at eight gigabytes of RAM and it's not upgradable. So if you're a heavy multitask user, that may be a no-go for you, but for gaming, since we'll still be using pretty low settings, I don't think it'll actually be that much of an issue. Storage capacity also takes a hit on this sub $500 model. It only comes with a 256 gigabyte SSD, but you can indeed upgrade to a better and bigger drive if you wanted to. For the display, the specs are a bit weak as well. This is simply a 14 inch 1080p monitor with only a 60 Hertz refresh rate. But honestly, you just can't expect any more than that for a laptop price like this. Usually I wouldn't even bat an eye at a display like this on a budget laptop, but because this dedicated graphics card can actually achieve higher FPS numbers, I do kind of wish that this was a 120 hertz display, but I completely understand why it wasn't. And speaking of which, it's time to talk about that dedicated GPU and packed inside our $470 laptop is none other than the Nvidia GeForce MX450. And if you haven't heard of this, then you definitely need to buckle up. This chip here is literally the exact reason why the rest of the spec sheet is a bit weaker than normal, i.e. the eight gigabytes of RAM and 256 gigabytes of storage. You just don't ever see a dedicated GPU unit like this in laptops priced this low. Contrary to what you may believe, this MX450 can actually throw up some pretty impressive impressive results when gaming, and we definitely need to do a full 20 game benchmarking run to show what it's truly capable of. Before that though, it's important to highlight that this does come with Nvidia's Optimus technology, meaning that the laptop will switch back and forth between the 5500U's integrated graphics versus the dedicated GPU to preserve battery life. So if you're a regular coffee shop worker like I am, then you'll still get some pretty solid battery performance because it isn't using the MX450 all the time. Asus claims around 12 hours of battery life, but you'll most likely see about half of that to be honest. But Charging is super simple with the USB-C charger, and it doesn't have that annoying brick in the middle of the cable. Going back to the GPU though, here using GPU-Z, you can see that the actual chip itself is the TU-117, which is the same chip used for the GTX 1650s, but do be aware that there are multiple versions of the MX450 depending on the laptop. This one here is using two gigabytes of GDDR6, which is actually pretty solid, again for the price. And since according to our base GPU clock, that's 720 megahertz, it does look like this is actually the weak 
weakest MX450 option that's available. According to this chart from Tech Power Up, there's a 25 watt option, which is what we have, and then two different 30.5 watt options. So if you have one of those, you'll probably actually get a few extra FPS, which is definitely worth noting. Either way though, this MX450 dedicated graphics card will give us much better performance than something like integrated Vega 7 graphics. So let's do our full benchmarking run now to see what it's truly capable of. There are other parts of my review that I want to cover next, such as IO options, keyboard and trackpad, and that one obnoxiously baller feature that I still can't believe that's included, but let's check out this performance first. Starting with Fortnite, here we put the settings at 1080p in performance mode, as you would expect, and we got a massive 146 FPS average with an extremely solid 1% low number as well. This is exactly what I was talking about when having that 60 hertz display. The panel doesn't even do this ultra budget laptop justice, but again, the price point. Next up, we tested Apex Legends, which is definitely tougher to run, and still with 1080p and low settings, we got just over that target 60 FPS mark, and you love to see this demanding of a game getting over 60 at the sub $500 price point. After that, we tested Valorant, which shouldn't be terribly difficult to run on any modern laptop, honestly, and with 1080p and low settings, we got again a very impressive result of 134 FPS. Minecraft trailed after that, and when using the 1080p and fancy settings, we got a very similar average of 134 FPS. We're off to a killer start so far. Next up was Grand Theft Auto V, and with 1080p and normal settings, which is pretty much just medium, we got well over 60 with an average FPS of 87. Now after that, we did test the bit more demanding games, and although all of these got under 60, they are all still very playable FPS numbers, and again, it's super impressive for a $470 laptop. Forza Horizon 5 was the first one, and with the built-in benchmarking, tool in 1080p and low settings, we got 45 FPS. After that was Call of Duty Vanguard, and in 1080p with very low settings, we got 47 FPS. Lost Ark Tread after that, which confused me a bit because I thought this one would run a bit better, but in 1080p with low settings, we got 42 FPS. And finally, for the last game we benchmarked, we fired up Elden Ring, and even with this brand new and demanding title, we got an average of 44 FPS, albeit we did have to jack the resolution down to 720p. Still playable, though. And for the consistent benchmark, you know we ran a quick 3D Mark Time Spy run, and this Aces Zen Book 14 with the MX450 was able to squeeze out a score of 1,854. And honestly, I've definitely gotten around that same score with some of my budget 400-ish dollar gaming desktops with much better hardware in there. Here's 10 more titles. And as you can see, we did have to lower some of the more demanding games down to 720p, just like we did with Elden Ring. Honestly, all of that is super impressive in my opinion. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, I would highly recommend checking out this video up here where you can see the results of a budget $500 laptop that only has the integrated graphics in there there you'll see the big difference. But with the performance aside, let's quickly knock out the rest of this review if you are thinking about picking this laptop up as your next portable gaming machine. First up for the keyboard, this is definitely another one of the downfalls as the keys are about as mushy as it gets. And honestly, it feels like you're using your grandparents' laptop that they're still using from over a decade ago that they swear doesn't need upgraded because all they do is check email and play solitaire. The trackpad though is on a different level. However, I love the extended large design of it and I didn't have any problems at all with the accuracy and it actually felt quite good. For ports and I.O., on the left-hand side, you have a much appreciated full-size HDMI port, as well as two USB Type-Cs. Remember, you'll be using one of those for charging. And over on the right side, there's again a much appreciated full-size USB Type-A port, and there's also a micro SD slot and an audio combo jack. The port selection is fine in my opinion. If you're someone that's gonna be plugging in a ton of peripherals, you'll definitely wanna pick up something like this USB-C adapter hub. That way you can plug in a mouse, keyboard, headset, etc. But overall, again, for the price, I can't complain too much about this setup. What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Shuggy. I'm the new videographer and editor here at ZTT, and I just wanted to give you guys a demonstration of what the built-in webcam and the microphone sound like and look like. And finally, for the speakers, this system is from Harman slash Cardone, whatever that means. But my goodness, these get way louder than I thought they would, and the quality is seriously top notch. I'm not going to be able to fully showcase this to you through the medium of this video on YouTube, but I seriously cannot believe how high quality the speaker system is. Despite the speakers being at the bottom face down, the sound quality is fantastically accurate, and both vocals and music sound amazing on this, even at max volume level. Other than the dedicated MX450 graphics card, these speakers are seriously my favorite feature of this entire laptop. It just doesn't make sense how good this sounds. For my last little bit, I do want to talk about the overall feel and build quality of the laptop. It is made out of mostly plastic and fake brushed aluminum, but honestly, it still feels pretty hefty and it feels pretty solid to hold and walk around with. I don't feel like I'm carrying a $200 cheapo Chromebook. It actually feels pretty robust. The hinge mechanism is super smooth and durable, and the top panel doesn't actually attract a ton of fingerprints, so it's always looking fresh. 
Without a doubt, I would definitely recommend the Asus ZenBook 14 to anybody that's looking for an ultra budget gaming laptop. But if you are looking to spend around this amount of money on a custom desktop route instead, you know, of course, I got you covered. Feel free to click the video that's on the screen now.